Good morning, my brothers and sisters in Christ, and to all the sinners in the world, to every sinner in the world. You know, we come in two categories, uh, saved sinners and unsaved sinners. So it's just good to be here today, as this is the day the Lord made just for us and we are rejoicing and we are so glad in this most wonderful day however before we venture any further before we go down the highway and landscape into god's bible study today let us pray father this day in the mighty name of jesus we just stop by the Thank you. Just said thank you to bless us for letting us see another day. Thank you for going along with us on our tedious journey until at which time that we will hear the trumpet sound and the shout of the voice of your chief angel. We thank you, Lord, and we bless you and just lift us up and enable us to hear what you have to say to us today. These and all blessings we ask now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And thank you, Lord. Now let us go to Scripture. Uh, today we are still in the book of Hebrews. Uh, we're going to read in your hearing Hebrews chapter 6, verses 1 through 6 from the New International version and translation of the Bible. Therefore, let us move beyond the elementary teachings about Christ and be taken forward to maturity, not laying again the foundation of repentance from acts that lead to death and of faith in God. Instruction about cleansing right the laying on of hands, the resurrection of the dead, and eternal judgment, and God permitting, we will do so. It is impossible for those who have once been enlightened, who have tasted the heavenly gift, who have shared in the Holy Spirit, who have tasted the goodness of the Word of God, and the power of the coming age, and who have fallen away to be brought back to repentance. To their loss, they are crucifying the Son of God all over again and subjecting him to public disgrace. End of reading. So Paul is telling us today that in our following Jesus and studying this Bible and living a life of sacred, we must go beyond the elementary teachings. We must go beyond what we got uh, when we first got saved. You know, when you're in elementary school, you learned your ABCs. You learned how to count from one to 10, then to 100. Then you went on to learn how to add, subtract, and you multiplication tape, but we have to move on beyond that. We have to go on to get some azimuth, some trigonometry, and all these other things. Uh, so we got to go beyond where we started at. And then say, is it possible for those who have been enlightened and saved, who have tasted heaven, who have shared the Spirit of God, who have tasted the goodness of the Word of God, and the power of the coming age, and, and those who, you know, fall away to repent again. So we can't repent one time. Now, we can confess, we can't be forgiven, but we're going to talk about that in a minute, amen? So we're going to talk about that in a minute. So there's a lot of discussion uh, this day and time about once a person uh, gets saved, can they lose their salvation? And that has been a discussion uh, over the many, many years. So we're going to listen to hear what God says about that on this study today. Amen. As we look at the graphic here today, 
we see heading at the top of your screen. He died for us. Who died for? Jesus died for us. And then we have a question for our title today, Lesson 10. Can a truly saved person be ever lost again? And to put that in plain terms, can a person who is saved become unsaved again? So we're going to answer that question today. The Holy Spirit is going to guide us into answering that question. Because you will be asked this question by some people who don't know the Lord, who don't know how God functions. And our lesson outline today, we will look at the context. The context. Amen. The true what's coming out of the context of the scripture. What is it? What is the word saying to us? So many times we can get out of the context of the scripture and this gets us away from the word of God. But we must stay focused upon what the scripture is speaking to us. In our second outline, we're going to look at the confusion, the confusion about whether or not a person can get unsaved again. And we'll look at our final outline where, where we will get our clarification that we will have an understanding about what salvation is all about and that we could go and share and minister to someone else who are where at one time we were before we got saved. So let's strap up and, and let's get ready to go today. So we are in for a powerful, powerful lesson. Many in the culture of today's world of prosperity ministry, the one who say name it and claim it and lift up holy hands, this style of worship. The answer to the question, can a truly saved person be ever lost again? So we're looking for that answer. There is perhaps a lot of people who say a saved person can be lost again, or they say a person can get unsaved. The old folks used to say, if you don't watch out, boy, you're going to lose your religion. What they were really saying is that if I don't look at the way I'm going, that I could get unsaved. And see, there are times years ago when a person would make a mistake, uh, uh, a brother might have been saved and he had a fall down. He might have got into an adulterous or uh, fornicated act. And that person, uh, sometime, I remember a place where they had put them on the, on the morning bench that they could get saved all over again. But see, uh, Jesus gives us clarification even before we get into our lesson. As we look at John 10, verses 28 through 30, the New International Reader's Verse, he said, I give them eternal life and they will never die. No one can steal them out of my hand. My father who has given them to me is greater than anyone. No one can steal them out of my father's hand. I and my father are one. Simply put, Jesus saying, once we are saved, once we confess with our mouth, Amen. The Lord Jesus and believe in our heart that God has raised him from the dead and God saves us and we are saved. We will never again be unsaved. As he said in the B part of that uh, 20th verse, he said, no one can steal them out of my hand. He means no human being. No thing, he said, I give, and, and open up, he said, I give them eternal life. That's what, that's forever life. And he goes on to say, in, in the other part of that, that first compound, so he said, they will never die. And then he goes on to say, those who are saved, in verse 29 right here, he said, my father who has given them to me is greater than anyone. No one can steal them out of my father's hand. And verse 30 said, I and my father are one. So we got Jesus 
and God. No one can get unsaved. But we're going to move on. The rest of us, we get clarification of this of these verses here, John 10, 28 to 30. And so I would encourage you to read this verse over and over again and let it become a part of you. Should the possibility of a saved sinner being lost again to the world, this would signify that Satan, who is the prince of the air, would essentially have superior power to undo the Father and Son's work of saving repentant sinners who have confessed that Jesus is the Lord and their undying faith that is God raised Jesus up from the, his grave on the third day morning. So see, God is, Jesus is, is, is what, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, he's a mighty counsel, right? He's a mighty God. So this means that Satan would have power if he could undo anything that God puts together. So we see, you know, that, so anyway, we, we won't just salivate on that. Today's lesson will give clarification and confirmation. Can a truly saved person be lost again? Let's look at the context. To interpretate, interpretate today's passage, we must keep it in its biblical context, according to Hebrews chapter 6, verses 1a. And it reads, so let us lead the simple teachings about Christ. Let us grow up as believers. So, so many times when uh, one gets connected with the church, they get saved, they get baptized, and they receive the right hand of fellowship. And, and, and sometimes we fall away from them, and they are not nurtured to continue to study. In the King James Version, it reads, uh, Second Timothy two fifteen, it says, "Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman who does not need to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth." Now the uh, modern King James version reads, "Study honestly to present yourself approved to God, a workman does not need to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth." So we must keep our new converts studying the Bible. We must teach them the parts of the Bible. We must teach them that there's a historical part of the Bible. Amen. Uh, and, and, and we must uh, teach them that there are the Psalms, amen, in the Bible. We must teach them the books of the Old Testament and the New Testament. We must teach them about the wisdom books. Amen. We must teach them about the, the letters that different ones wrote. We must really uh, open up to them the entire set. Teach them how to study the Bible. Teach them how to do daily Bible studies and to read through the Bible at least once every year. Come up with a system for, for studying the Bible. But so many times we just come in and get a right hand of fellowship and say, you know, meet. We meet every Sunday at 930 or whatever time it is and you pay your tithes and this and then we just leave them alone. But we must do a better job. Amen? Amen. Amen. The writer of Hebrews and Paul's letter to Timothy is encouraging you, I, and the church that we as seasoned, saved sinners and new converts can't stand still. We must, we all must make the commitment to progress as workers in the Lord's vineyard. See, if you're working in the vineyard, you can't stand in one place with your whole rake. You got to move on down the road. You got to progress. Amen. If you're going to have a, a bountiful crop and a, and a harvest, we're going to look at what are the basics of ABCs of the Christian faith. Repentance from dead works. Repentance from dead works. See, so many people think that they can repent a second time. We don't need to repent again, amen, to be saved. Because that would put Christ back on the cross a second time. And Christ is not going back on the cross a second time. When Christ comes back, he is coming back, amen, for the marriage feast of the Lamb, where he is the, uh, where he's the, he's, he's the bridegroom. And the church is the bride to, for that for that 
perfect marriage. That's what Christ is coming back for. Amen. So, 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 no, we don't need to be saved again, but sometimes we have to, amen, look at, amen, the type of works that we are doing. Sometimes we are doing works, but we don't have no faith. See, works alone designed to get us to heaven are dead works. See, works cannot get us into heaven. Helping some old person across the street uh, or just simply passing out bottled water and that's going to get us to heaven. Oh, those are good deeds, but these are works. But now we are doing works, but do we have faith? See, faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Repentance is turning away from the belief that works alone can produce salvation. That's what repenting is. When we repent, see, one time we thought we just come to church every Sunday and put our money in Sunday school and say the Bible verse. And, and then when service starts, we say amen to the preacher when, it, when we got touched by it and, and drop our envelope on the plate and lift up some holy hands and and then benediction comes, we go home and wait for next Sunday to start it all over again. See, but works without some faith is just dead. Faith is the key ingredient to being saved. Isn't that right? If you confess with your mouth, Lord, and believe, that's what faith is, in your heart that God raised him to have faith in God, you will be saved. See, it is faith. It is faith. See, this Christian religion is all about faith. Amen? Repentance is a foundational part of salvation, but repentance alone is not enough repentance alone is not enough something else got to happen a man we're going to be that truly saved person repentance leading to salvation must include the main ingredient which is faith see so repenting without faith is tantamount to like cooking a cake without flour and sugar. We got to have those main ingredients. See, so we must have faith. Faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Hebrews 6.1 reads, let us not start all over again with the basic teachings they taught us that we must have faith in God. So some of the time when people uh, make a mistake or they fall or make a slip and a fall, because we all do that, as Romans 3.23 informs us, we have all sinned and come short of the glory of God. We all fall every now and then. And God has to lift us up when we go and talk to them and tell them about our problems. So we don't need to start off again. We need to just go to God and talk to him about our problems. Because we mess up doesn't mean that we are not unsaved. I think Romans uh, 6, 23 says, for the wage of sin is death, but the gift of God is what? Eternal life. See, God gives eternal life. So we don't need to be saved again. How does one obtain an access faith? Romans 10, 17 reads, So faith comes from hearing and hearing through the word of God. So we got to study that word. We got to study about God. We got to study about creation. We got to know how Moses got a man and people got across a man the Red Sea. We got to know how Moses and, and the Hebrews got out of uh, uh, Egypt. Amen. We got to know how Jesus came, amen, into the world. See, and once this gets inside of us, then our faith, amen, began to grow. We don't need to start off from basic. 
We need to just keep on moving and progressing. We must study that word every day of our life. Some point in the day, we need to open our Bibles or our devotions and ingest something pertaining to God's most holy word. Just like we brush our teeth every day, we must study God's word. Some portion every day. Our devotion, however you might do it, but we need to be in the word. Because the Bible says words are lamp to our feet and a light to our path. And then say his word will hide our heart that we will not sin against him. Faith toward God. The Apostle Paul reveals that repentance and faith joined together are the main blend that Jesus put together on the cross to unsaved sinners being saved sinners. Romans 10, 9 said, Believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, and you will be saved. See, so that is our act of faith. Now, we didn't see, we weren't at Jesus' tomb. Huh? We didn't see him when he was around 40 days after he got up. We didn't see Mary Magdalene with him at the tomb. We didn't see that. But we believe that because the Bible said it, and we believe that by faith, and then that's it. That is self. That is self. Amen. Amen. Let's look at the confusion. And we'll read again Hebrews 6, 4 through 6. For it is impossible to bring back to repentance those who were once enlightened. That means those who were saved. Those who have experienced the good things of heaven and shared in the Holy Spirit, who have tasted the goodness of the word of God and the power of the age to come, and who then turn away from God, it is impossible to bring such people back to repentance by rejecting the Son of God. They themselves are nailing him to the cross once again and holding him up to public shame. Let's unwrap this scripture uh, what it's saying here. Uh, the writer said it is impossible to bring someone to repent again once they have been saved. See, so they experience the good things of heaven. They know about Jesus and the Holy Spirit has touched them and got them saved. And Jesus already said, once we get saved, we cannot get unsaved. He said, no one can snatch us out of the Father's hand. Are we farming now? He said, who have tasted the goodness of the word of God and the power of the age to come. So these have studied the word of God. They know what God has said in the word. They know what God expects of them. And, 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 and they have been following the word, but they might have had one little misstep. They said, who then turned away from God? Mean that what? They made a mistake. They say, it is possible to bring such people back to repentance. What? They don't need to repent no more. Because the only way we can repent is Christ got to get back on the cross. So Jesus is not going back on the cross again. So if we said we're going to repent again, that means we're rejecting what God said about Jesus Christ is coming back on the cloud. Then it said they themselves are nailing him to the cross once again and hold him up to public shame. So no way is Jesus Christ going back on the cross again. No more would Jesus Christ have nails, nails in hand. Jesus won't have nails nailed his feet again. Jesus will never have another spear piercing his side. Jesus will never hang on the cross begging for water again. So for me to say I'm going to repent all over again, that means Jesus Christ would have to what? Go back on the cross again. And Jesus Christ, no way, no how, is going to go back on the cross again. So we're going, we're going to move on with this confusion here. We're going to make this confusion, amen. Amen. Give us some clarity. And keep with the subtopic, the confusion. The confusion many have is that saved sinners 
can lose their salvation. That Jesus died on the cross afforded them when they confessed Jesus, believed he died on the cross, and that God did raise him from the dead. See, there are some people, there's a, there's a culture out there that believe that people can lose their salvation. So this is causing a man confusion. There's nothing but Satan going around like that roaring lion, seeing who he can devour and destroy. Amen. Saved Christians, let me say again, can't possibly get unsaved. Let's look at what John 5, 24 tells us. Truly, truly, I say to you, whoever hears my word and believes him who sent me has eternal life. He does not come into judgment, but has passed from death to life. Now, this is Jesus speaking. He, he says, truly, truly, he wants to hear him. He said, whoever hears his word. That means when we take time to hear his word and receives his word and believes that God sent Jesus and believe a man that God raised Jesus from the dead, that one has eternal life. That one is saved once and for all. And then he said he does not come into the judgment. Amen. He won't, that person, he or she won't be banished to the lake of fire that burns eternally. But they said, Jesus said, but has passed from what? Death, what? To life. They've gone past the lake of fire, but to an eternal life with God. See, so saved Christians cannot get unsaved. Believers can, amen, fall down. That's what David said. We can fall down. But God picks us up. Then look what Psalms 37, 24 reads. Though he fall, he shall not be cast headlong. For the Lord upholds hand. See, we might start falling, but God's not going to let us fall all the way down and crash. He said he shall not be cast, what, headlong. Before we go all the way down, God is going to lift us up. God's going to lift us up out of our stuff when we are saved Christians. Amen. We're going to get a little further here. Amen. Amen. The confusion some might have who are full of best in God's word believe when a saved sinner stumbles in sins, they must send Christ back to the cross to get them saved a second time all of it this is far from the truth as it confirmed in some roman road scriptures which we said a while ago for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. the operative word and verb is what fall there are times that we fall short of god's glory Though we are saved sinners, we are far from being perfect and without sin as Jesus. Now, Apostle John, with Jesus speaking to the Apostle John, who was on the Isle of Patmos, as God, Jesus spoke to him, look what he says in 1 John 1, 9. See, God's not going to leave us hanging out to dry on the closed line of unconfessed sin. And I forgive him sin. Say, he said, uh, look what John said. He said, if we, us, the saved Christian, confess our sins, he, Jesus, is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. See, we all do some unrighteous things. We all do some things every now and then that God does not like. He's not agree with. See, but now the thing is what we do, we don't repent. But we must what? Confess. We don't need to repent putting Jesus back on the cross again. See, that's different between repentance and confessing. In other words, see, repentance means to go in the opposite way of unconfessed sins. But once we've gotten right with God, once we've gotten saved, 
when we make a misstep, then what we do from here on out, we don't repent, we confess. That means telling God we already knows about the wrong or the fault that we just had, us having presently. And said, so when we confess, tell him about it, tell him how bad we did, how wrong we are. The Bible said he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from everything that we did wrong that was unpleasing to him. Amen. Every saved sinner's foundation is Jesus and him crucified. That's the foundation. So Jesus Christ is not going to get crucified again. So that is our foundation. See, we're not going to tear up the foundation because we make a slip up. See, Jesus got crucified once and for all. Amen. And that's where he shed his blood for every sinner saved and unsaved. Amen. But look what Paul say in his letter to the Corinthians in chapter 3, verse 11. No one can lay a foundation other than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Jesus laid the, his foundation, amen, for saving sinners at Calvary. See, we all went to the cross and repented. Amen, amen, amen. See, so there's no other foundation that anybody can lay except Jesus Christ. And God laid that foundation. We allowed Jesus Christ to go on Calvary and to die for your sins and mine and for the sins of the world. Amen. Let's look at the clarification. To full understand Hebrews 6, 4 through 6 requires having a full and thorough understanding of repentance and confession. Amen. Repentance in the New Testament is used as a chamber to signify salvation and conversion. See, repentance is done, amen, towards getting saved. See, Christians can't get saved a second time, as this will require Jesus coming to be crucified and dying a second time at Cairo. See, repentance, amen, is, 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 is one step into getting saved. So we don't go back repent again because we don't, we say we don't need to repent again. So that would require Jesus Christ going back on Calvary and suffering all over again. That would require him uh, having Judas to deny him again. That would require Peter to back up and rewind and deny him three times. That would, remind, that would require a rewind of Jesus going back and getting beat all that long. That's not going to happen. He died once for all of our sins. See, that was a perfect sacrifice. Amen. Question. When you want to say, where did you go to get saved, to become a saved sinner? You're right. You went to Calvary. You went to Calvary, to the cross, where Jesus died for your sins and my sins and the sins of the world. Romans 5, 8 reads, God showed his love for us that while we were still sinners, Christ Die for Christ was on the cross, and it's at the cross where we got saved by the shed blood of Jesus Christ. Saved sinners don't repent to get saved again. Saved sinners confess their faults to be forgiven of unintentioned sin. Amen. In 1 John 1, 9 says, if we confess, that is right there, if we confess our sins, see, that means we tell God, yes, God, I messed up. Yes, God, I told a lie. Yes, I look at something I shouldn't have been looking at. But we tell God we did it. And then we ask God, Lord, please forgive me. They say he is faithful and just to what? Forgive us our sins. And then what? Once he forgives us, then he cleans us up. Put our, turn us around, put our feet what, on solid ground. Without being redundant, it is impossible for saved sinners to be saved a second time. As saved sinners can never be snatched from God's hand who saved them in the mighty name of Jesus. Romans 11:29 reads, 
But God's gifts and his call can never be withdrawn. So once God saves us, we cannot get unsaved. Amen. And being redundant again, I give them eternal life and they will never die. No one can steal them out of my hand. My father who has given them to me is greater than anyone. No one can steal them out of my father's hand. I and the father are one. That's why I always say in the mighty name of Jesus, I do this. See, we go to Jesus because Jesus Christ said, quote, I am the way, the truth and life. No man come to the father, but by me. And he said, I and the Father are one. As we close now, should there be one or more who uh, might be certain of your salvation? You might be uncertain of your salvation, amen, as guaranteed to all who confess to Jesus being Lord and believing that God, our Father, raised Jesus from the dead. We extend to you this invitation to Christian discipleship. Paul lets you know you are not less than or inferior to us saved sinners in these words. He said, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Right now, the decision is yours. As your blood is presently warm in your veins. For the ways of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. In Jesus Christ, our Lord. Eternal life, that's the key. In Jesus, I mean, living and eternity. Living forever with Jesus and never dying a physical death. Never dying a spiritual death. When we are in there with Jesus for eternity. A man for the long haul. We'll never have to come back here again. So we thank it right now. We invite you, a man, to come. If you feel a still, quiet voice speaking to you, perhaps that is God's Holy Spirit. Being that you have made your decision, you can do the following. As Paul recommends, you confess your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead. You will be saved. For with the heart one believes and is justified, and with the mouth one confesses and is saved. That can be you right now. If that's you right now, uh, you may call me at 601-672-9429 at 601-672-9429, and I will pray with you. And we'll pair you up with a deacon or someone or some saint in our church who will kind of who will work along with you and 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 make you and make you their Bible study part of just bring you on board. Amen. Oh, I want to bless you right now. Let us pray, Father, now in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you for this word, Father. We thank that you're sure of us, Father, that once you have saved us, we cannot get unsaved again, Father. And we pray for that brother or sister right now. We have made that decision to follow Jesus. And that they have confessed their mouth to Jesus, Lord. And, and they believe that God raised from the dead, Lord. And we just pray for them right now. Bless them like only you can. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And thank you, Lord. Oh